So, which which domain are we in when we're offering gratitude to our parents? On, I'm going to put our framework back on. Can you do the there's so, three domains. Five key components. You're good. So you have three domains, me, you, and us. And sorry, it's a bit dim. You can't see much, but... Uh, but you're right. When you talk about... Yep. And when you do... Yeah. 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 So you did a great job. So you said social connectedness is what... And that... Which domain is social connectedness? It's a you and an us. And me. But, uh, me is self-awareness from, from, from your son going, oh wow, I have gratitude, but I'm going to offer it to my parents. And then also, this talks about the family. So you're actually, the, these are, again, self skills and properly the three domains. Yeah. So this is wonderful. Yeah. Okay, ready for the energy shifting exercise. So this is the daily practice. Thermometer, oh no, sorry, feelings and needs. We took our temperatures. Now take, put down your feelings and needs. How are you feeling right now? What do you need? Normally we don't cut down so long. You know, it's, it's a little faster. And this is the sequence. You know, uh, temperature, feelings and needs, energy shifting exercise. Mindfulness, breathing, something else we're gonna do today. So now let's put our feelings and needs down. I, I'm sure Sophie, Sophie explained to you when you do it with your class, you can ask the class to put their cards face up and you can zip around and check and look at everyone's temperature, but if someone's feeling shy, they can put their cards face down so that not everybody sees them, and then just the teacher will take a peek, and then you'll know very quickly who you need to check in with during the day and who's having a great day. So normally, what we do in our classes, we do temperature, feelings, and needs, and then share. And then, and then the students go, oh, I'm in the volcano because I feel excited and I need it. So normally, we do these two steps first, sharing, and then exercise to change the energy. Okay, everybody's got their feelings and needs down. Go in the front and, and help yourself. There's a thermometer. Whoever is new, go in the front and, and, and get what you're missing. Thermometer, feelings and needs. So when you have a lot of feelings and needs, I would also say pick the most important feeling and the most important need. Because I see a lot over there. Okay, now so now we've done our temperature, feelings and needs. We've shared. We're going to do an energy shifting exercise. Last week we focused on mindfulness because we, we had a teacher, so this is great. Uh, we learned a lot. I mentioned that we don't really go into meditation with children or students. They're not there yet. But what we call meditation or mindfulness for our students are just very basic regulation exercise with breathing exercise. We could do count 10 breathings, like that's one, and then I do up to 10. That would be one exercise. So we do this with the students. For you as a teacher, you need to develop a very good practice in mindfulness and please use the teachers you have here. You're very lucky to be here. Today we're gonna to do something different. We're gonna do the secret garden. Because people mentioned uh, visualization last week, so I'm gonna lead, uh, the, it's not a meditation, but I'm gonna lead this visualization with you so you can see uh, what we do with children. And I call them children, I mean students. We start this in grade one, right, Dad? Even uh, kindergarten, we do this exercise. The idea is to go inside ourselves and find a place of peace and calmness. It's to touch base inside ourselves. So what I explain to the classes is when you go into your own secret garden, there are no friends. You don't invite anyone. It is your own place. It's just for you. So you shouldn't really find your best friend in there. It's just for you. What we're going to do is take three deep breaths. First deep breath, we relax. And the second one, imagine you're seeing the entrance to your garden. It could be anything. A gate, it could be some place you've ever, you've been before also. It could be a real place. Second breath, you see the gate. And then the third one, you're inside your garden. And then you're gonna just follow what I'm saying, okay? So to do that, we sit down comfortably. Mm -hmm. 
and it's much easier when we close our eyes. So we're going to take our three deep breaths. First deep breath. Relax. Second breath, I see the entrance to my garden. And third breath, I'm inside my garden. And right away I can feel very calm and peaceful inside. I feel safe and comfortable. I look around myself and see what's there. Are there th no trees, flowers? Maybe there's a little spring and I go for a walk to explore my garden. Maybe there's some animals in the garden. And I'm taking my little stroll. I look for a quiet place, tiny place, really comfortable one, where I can sit down and relax. Looking for a quiet corner. When you find the quiet corner, just relax and sit down. You can lie down. You can sit. Just find a comfortable position and take three deep breaths. And take a little bit of time to rest. When you finish resting, you can stand up from your little quiet corner and go for a last little stroll through your garden. So, any comments on this? How is it that when we do this with, especially the younger students, and uh, quite surprisingly, even old ones, they really, really want to share. Like, oh my God, you should see what I want. I saw these trees in my garden, and there was a tree with candies on it. All kinds of things can happen. Again, there are no right and wrong answers. This is like something that's happening inside someone. What we don't want to hear is, my best friends were there, and uh, this is. This, this we have to have a little chat with the, the students and say, look, let's try to, to just do this for yourself. This is your own little place. I only once had a student who said, my garden was full of bombs and there was fire everywhere. Uh, so this is not an exercise I'm going to do with that student the next day, for sure. <coughs> We're going to find some other way to relax. So sometimes this can happen. This, and when you see that the reaction is not good, then this exercise should not be done, but it's really relaxing for most uh, children and they really enjoy it. So how is it for you? Any comments? And uh, sorry, it was quite quick. We did it quite quick. Any comments? Do you see anything or it was black? Raise your hand if it was all black in there. So again, when that happens, there was a, a young boy in grade four who said, that's okay, that's because it was nighttime in my garden. <laughs> that's exactly what I tell my students now, because this is it. When our minds are very busy, it's hard to have a good visual. We're not really relaxed. And today my garden was half black and had snow and flowers, because I think I'm still half in Canada and here with the weather. So it was a very funny experience. Anybody saw something? Another want to share? Want to share? Uh, when I was in imagining the gardens, the garden which uh, is usually nearby my schools, so when I was entering the garden, I seen so many flowers in there and then so many beautiful birds singing around and then I can see all the butterflies are there. When I was going to see the corner of the side, I see there's a dog just looking at my side. So I was wondering that I'm a little bit scared that dog's coming to bite me. <laughs> After that, I just, you know, Slowly, slowly, just uh, walk out from the garden that I feel that it's gone. That's all. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yay. Maybe next time you can tell the dog to go and change garden. Yeah, just send him away. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like to share? Um, I, I would like to maybe I mean, um, uh Garden may be not be the most comfortable place for many people. For example, for me, garden is not a comfortable place. Maybe my bed is most comfortable for me. <laughs> my, my room and my bed, I can relax there, you know. So garden is not a disturbance. But maybe same thing for others. 
uh, I mean, my question is, is it should be a garden or somewhere else? Any place where you feel comfortable? Like uh, inside the, you know, the temple or it could be place inside the temple where you can relax and, you know, you can concentrate. It's cool and <laughs> it could be like that. <laughs> In my garden, I have many doors, and most of them are real gardens I visited during my travels. And the quiet place where I go and rest, that could be your temple, or even your bedroom turns up in there. So, and if you don't like the image of the garden, you could just, you know, you could start with a quiet place inside, but that's harder for young students to imagine. This one is, is quite, we find quite easy for children to imagine, but you could have a physical representation of your room inside. Or, or something like this. So actually there's not really any limits to, to what could be found inside, but what we don't want is the presence of other people. We're trying to find a, a, a kind of an anchor inside ourselves where we feel grounded and safe and calm and we can go back to rest a little bit and then attend to something else. And now in our school, sometimes children ask the teachers, can we do the garden before the exam? Uh, so this is for them, and like, oh, you know, I'm gonna go and rest and then I'm gonna do my exam. So. So if you don't like the image, it's fine, but see what works. As long as you understand that this is finding your own safe space where you can go and relax inside, that's what it is. Okay. Oh. Thank you for that. Uh, just wanted to share something that sometimes in these kind of experiences, at least I've uh, read that, there's a term, technically we call it incubation of anxiety. Uh, that might get released when someone is trying that. And like uh, the, uh, and we just, uh, man just told us, uh, if that's happening, then that's again a red alert that uh, needs to be broken. So if, instead of making either oneself or the student calm, like it should, if the subjective experience is one of release of some stored distress that was not accessible for many days, then, well, this is called relaxation induced anxiety. Technically, what it means is something was in the cold store and we just went to that level and then it is accessible. So that's not to worry, but it could be probed and then we made sure that there's nothing significant. That's, that's it. I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up because we, we had a conversation yesterday talking about trauma and kids who have experienced any kind of trauma in their lives often when you get them to relax or get them to connect with feelings that need, it can trigger um, a lot of anxiety or just very high emotion. They could start crying and there's this release that, he, that Vishnu is uh, describing that is, can be really distressing for you as the teacher and for the student. So we've had two cases in 10 years that were quite profound, so you're not going to get it very often, hopefully. Um, and those are two kids that we asked, they were allowed to go to the library or do something else during the time where we did the connection of feelings and needs. So all the activities that you do for, um, that Sophie's talked about within the me, you, and us, you can do. But when it comes to self-regulation specific techniques, like secret garden, you avoid. But they can still do self-regulation techniques such as um, yoga or there's martial art warm-up. So we're going to show you in this book, we have about 30 exam or maybe 25 ways to self-regulate. And you just need to choose different self-regulation activities if you have a kid who's been traumatized in your class. Yoga, going for a drink of water, running around the, the track once or twice, uh, listening to music, uh, coloring a mandala, like tons of ways to calm yourself and self-regulate that won't end up triggering a student who's been traumatized, but that kid is giving you a red alert that we need to find some outside support for that student. Someone in your school, a counselor, a social worker, a psychologist, or even someone outside of the school that can do more in-depth um, counseling. And tomorrow we're going to talk about intervention, and we're going to use a pyramid model to show you about what happens in a school that probably not more than 5% of your uh, student population really needs professional intervention at this level. And they're very easy to pick out when you use the cell material because exactly these things will happen and you'll know. First thing with uh, that, that little child I was mentioning that was saying, I've got bombs in my garden. I mean, we didn't leave it at that. So <laughs> we went and investigated and connected with the parents and all of this. A child that connects feelings to needs and the need make them completely dysregulated. 
as Tara was saying, trauma. So then now we can, we connect with the therapist for this, and we, we organize things. So tomorrow we're going to talk about this. In depth. Yeah? Okay. So we have a busy schedule, and all is running behind. Um, what we wanted you to do today, because we spoke with the teachers yesterday, we had a wonderful time going <laughs> on an expedition, and during lunchtime we, we talked about what would be useful, what would you like to know more about. And so today we want you to teach a cell lesson. We want you to teach a lesson, but before we go into teaching, because I was looking through the table of content, you're going to get our manual. I'm going to explain how we're going to do this. But before you start teaching, there's one thing I did not mention this week. Uh, we, you remember we spoke about jackal and giraffe language? Yes. Okay, so in the same line, there are also the pairs of ears. So I'm going to explain that because it's in here. And this is probably the last little piece missing for the me domain, which is the most important in this book. So it goes like this. Giraffe language is the language of compassion or, you know, I statements. This is when I connect my feelings and my needs. So now you're quite good with this already. We've used this in many different situations. Conflict resolution, offering empathy to someone, active listening, uh, trying to go fish, understand somebody's feelings and needs. So you've been using this last week. And the jackal, which is not bad, but which is the strong emotion language. And we need to translate it back to giraffe. So jackal sends us signals. You remember the car with the dashboard and the lights that light up? That's pretty much like a jackal talking, hey, you know, something's happening, I've got these strong emotions. I have to realize this and then translate back into giraffe, understand my feelings and needs. And now there's also the ears that come with that. The ears are how we hear something. So, Taha, do you want to say, you want to describe a situation? And I'm going to play with the ears and show you the four ways we can hear a message. Either in jackal or, or giraffe. Uh, sure. <laughs> so, so I'll, we'll just do something super easy that we hear in school all the time. Um, I got my ears, my jackal ears on. <laughs> so it's really easy to answer in jackal. It's our natural way of, react, of answering. Um, Sophie, you're so mean. You can't come to my birthday party. You're so not my friend. I don't like you anymore. Anyways. I'm going to tell everybody not to play with you. <laughs> so I like my, my ears are right here, and I'm answering in jackal. Now I can also have my ears like this. Sophie, you're so mean. You can't come to my birthday party. I'm talking to myself in jackal. Oh my god, she hates me. Everybody hates me in this school. What am I going to do? That's true. I was so mean. I'm not really a nice person. I speaking, I'm speaking to myself in jackal like this. That's not helpful. Okay. <coughs> Speaking giraffe to myself. Sophie, you're so mean, you can't come to my birthday party. <sighs> oh, when she says that, my goodness, I'm feeling... Uh, I'm going to go see my feelings now. Feeling angry. Yo, so angry and sad. Yeah, I'm angry and sad, and I need, I think I need to understand why Tara's saying this to me. I think I'm going to go and ask her. So you see, now I'm speaking to myself in giraffe. So she's in the me domain, now she's going to switch to the you domain. In giraffe, because now I'm going to hear her. Sophie, you're so mean, you can't come to my birthday party. I'm going to go fish. But first, I'm going to take a deep breath because I really don't like it when she says that. Are you angry and you need to talk about what happened yesterday at recess when we fought? I am angry. I'm really angry. I don't want to be your friend anymore. I don't want you to come to my birthday party and I don't want to talk to you anymore and you're super mean. Right now, I want to put my jackal ears on. Now I make a big effort and then I get this. So I, I want to jump back to this. But, but I'm still in the volcano and I don't want to hear her right yeah. now. <laughs> okay, wait, uh, I need to understand this. Are you still hang angry? Yes. Do you need respect? Yes, oh, okay. 
Oh, I need more direct here. Um, you need friendship. Any friendship? I'm that has sure. to be from the gun? I'm not sure. Uh, not yet? I'm not sure. Do you need time? A little bit of time. Okay. We're getting somewhere. But I think so. I need to understand, too. Okay. Would you be willing to talk about it? Okay. So you see the four ways to hear a message. If you don't have these at home, <laughs> one way to remember how to do this is this. So, jackal ears out is finger pointing. You're the problem, you're responsible. Okay? You are me. You're not my friend anymore. Jackal towards myself is finger pointing at me. Oh, I'm bad, she's right, oh my goodness, nobody likes me, what am I going to do? Okay. So, giraffe ears to oneself, like this. <sighs> this is so hard, I feel, I need. And I regularly also. I give it a rest. Remember our rest model? model? We, we haven't figured out the T, but I think ST is good for strategy. Regulate, empathize, regulate. I hate it when I hear that. I'm so worried, I'm angry. Rest, regulate, empathize. I feel angry, I need respect and understanding and strategize. I'm going to go talk to her. That's taking action, that's your T. Yeah. Oh, taking action. Yeah, we, we have taking action. Okay. We're getting good at this. This is a super word. I think everybody should remember this. And this one, ears out. Wow, are you feeling sad and angry? Do you need respect, friendship, kindness? Okay, so remember the finger pointing and the hand gesture, which is much more welcoming and open. Giraffe and, and jackal are really fun for the younger elementary school students. But as soon as you get to around grade four and up it through high school, the hand gestures are much more meaningful yeah. for the for the students. And they don't think it's babyish. This is babyish. Although Marshall Rosenberg, who created this, uses this with adults. So when he's when he's passed away now, but his the team still use this to work with adults. We with kids don't find it as effective as your hand gestures. And, and I'm laughing now because I remember that like, last year we had a terrible conflict and I have four kids sitting in my office and they're very, very upset and I said, let's talk with our hands too. So as they're, going, as they're describing the situation, I'm, oh, wait, wait, I'm figure pointing. Um, um, okay, hold on. So we're talking while we're doing this and it was great fun and, and we ended up laughing so much because it was really hard, but they could visualize also almost the whole conflict and how their communication was affecting it, or helping it. Okay? Okay, so this was the last little thing missing from last week. So now you're ready to go. <laughs> I hope. I'm sure. We're gonna give you, we're gonna ask you to team up in groups of, we're, I think we, we're more than 40 right now. So either in teams of four or five, can you count or? Okay, teams of four or five, every team get a curriculum, okay? In the curriculum, you pick a lesson you would like to teach. Okay, teams of four. Teams of four, okay, we're good. So you pick a lesson you would like to teach, you read the lesson, and you go check out if some of this material on the table can help support your lesson. Okay, some of the books on the table, they're attached to a lesson, but you could use it in different ways. We never use one material in only just one way we can use in different ways. Um, Can I add something? Sure. So when we talk about social and emotional learning and the five key components and the three domains, me, you, and us, we're teaching an approach, we're teaching a way to be within ourselves. So as soon as you understand what self-regulation means and self-awareness, we use a thermometer, this thermometer, and we use, and but you might not want to use a thermometer. You might want to create your own way of having a basket of rocks, and when your kids come in, they take a rock, and they, have you talked to them about this already? Not yet. Okay. So Tomorrow. Tomorrow? No. <laughs> well, my point is... We always challenge each other. <laughs> when they're putting it. <laughs> but my point is that it's not about a program, it's not about a curriculum. You don't need this. You don't need a program that's been, that's on sale. What you need to understand are what are the components, what are you trying to teach, and then you can do it in your own way. So might, you might want to start with a thermometer because 
it's new for you and it's like, oh, we'll use the thermometer. But then when you're in your own class, you might decide you want to use bugs or, you know, bed bug is, oh, I'm feeling really terrible and a butterfly, I'm feeling great. Or you want to use rocks to show, connect feelings and needs. So you're still connecting feelings and needs, but you're going to do it in a way that makes sense to you. If you're a scientist, you'll do it differently than if you're an art teacher. Anyway. My point is that it's great to use something like this to get you started because we have lessons that actually describe how to teach each of the domains and how to connect feelings and needs and how to teach emotional literacy and how to connect with your own self-empathy. So it's great to use a lesson, but don't become attached to it. Become yeah, attached we, to... We don't even call it a curriculum now, we just call it guidelines and principles because we really want you to know that you're already doing a lot of this in your classes or you're about to do it and this is just putting this into light making sure you know where you're going in the cell model so it's it's so these are guidelines and principles very useful when you haven't done it though. totally where you need it so in teams of four you come and grab this uh, mind you we haven't done cooperative learning <coughs> it's gonna come tomorrow but you can you can check a lesson in there. If this is if this is what you want to teach, just look at the lesson. You have all that it takes to teach anything in here. Seriously, you're you're that good, really. So pick a lesson, practice it together, and after tea break, we're gonna explain to you what happens next. And did I forget something? Oh yes, science teachers. If you want to work, because now for for the in-service teachers, sometimes when you're teaching science, like you go, oh, this is a bit difficult for me. Uh, I don't really, but you do social emotional learning all the time in your classes, whether you want it or not, that it's part of it. It might not be that implicit, but see, uh, there's one book there that could be fun for science, but then it could be something like we're going to organize some cooperative learning, or when I put my, my students in a group to, to you know, learn together, how should I organize this? So. I think what Sophie's saying is that it might be useful if you're thinking you're going to be a counselor or if you already are a counselor, it would be great if you work together. If you're thinking you're going to be an English teacher, it would be great if you could work together. If you're a science teacher or you think you're going to go into science or math, work together. And if you don't know, it's fine. And if you just would rather stay and work with your best friends, that's fine too. The idea is to kind of connect with what you might want to teach and how you might want to teach it in, in your classroom. And you can use a lesson that's already in here, or you can use a lesson here for inspiration and completely change it to make it your yeah, Or think of something you're already doing and how you can, you know, put it into, uh, you know, just more, a bit more explicitly into the cell. Uh, like this. Right. Much more clear. Thank you. That's why we're a team. Okay. Okay, so, so pair up, team up, come and grab a curriculum and check your lessons first. Target which, which one you want to practice, and then after that, come and see what we have. Everything on this table can be used for something. And we're happy to help. So Yeah, we're, we're here. If you don't know, if, we're, if you need help, we're, we're going to give you crazy ideas. In groups of about four. Three, three or four or five. For, if you're interested in kindergarten K3, I also have a curriculum, but it's not finished yet. But you would have some like rough lessons in there. So come and see me if you want to do K3 lessons. This is grades 4 to 8. One, one curriculum per team. So figure out which teams are, who's working with who first. And uh, stand up, go and mix around. You can go out if you want to. It's not too hot. You can stay here. Find yourself a, a nice place to, to work together. Hi everybody, welcome back. I know you worked hard. I know some of you are very shy. And maybe this is not such a comfortable experience you've just had, or about to have. Um, we wanted to share with you, as teachers in school, what we noticed is that when teachers develop a connection with their colleagues, and they can seek help and support from each other, you have much more success in your classroom. So what we've seen is that we've had teachers that think that they need to be in charge 
that they need to know everything. My kids, my, my class, my problem, and you need to know everything. That's a really dangerous way of living your teaching experience, and it'll make you very stressed and very tired. But if you have a connection with your colleagues, and you're able to seek support from your colleagues, you'll be much happier. So let's say, for example, I have someone in my class who's driving me crazy. His behavior is just off the charts, and I don't, I've tried everything. Is it a good idea to put the pressure on myself that I need to know all the answers? No. It's a really great idea to be able to go to the teacher that had this boy last year that was so successful with this boy. I don't need to feel embarrassed or shame. It's that you had this amazing connection with this boy. I'm really struggling. Can you help me? What did, What was your magic? What, would you, what did you do? I need your help. Or maybe it's going to your counselor or another teacher who you think you have a good relationship with or who's a really good teacher in classroom management and ask for help. Be brave. Take your courage and get the support you need. That'll help you be the better teacher. So today, we're asking you to also take your courage. So we've asked you to look at lessons. Come up with a look at a, a lesson that you thought might be interesting that you might like to teach, that you could teach in the same way that's in the book, or maybe put your own flavor to it. And all of the groups that I spoke to did a really, really, really good job. And what we would really like you to do is to share with the class what lesson you picked and how you would teach it, because it's going to help them be able to teach it more easily when they choose to, if they choose to. So, I'll start with volunteers. But know that if you don't volunteer, I might still pick on you. <laughs> oh yeah, Sophie said we're going to do it in small groups. And it's true, that's a really good idea, except that then we don't all get to benefit from each other. So you don't have to be in front. You can stay where you are. But would anyone have the courage to take a risk and share what their lesson was and how they might like to teach it? And you can say, was it easy or hard? Do you like the lesson? I'll count to three. <laughs> if there's no volunteers, I don't think on you. One. Two. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. So if you want, your team can come to the front. If you want, your team can go wherever you want. <laughs> I, I guess front would be better because there's cameras. Okay, I also want to clarify one thing so that you're not nervous. Ready? So, some groups might actually demonstrate how they would teach a lesson, so they might role play, but some groups might just explain how they would teach a lesson. That's totally fine. So if this team is about to role play, don't panic. You can just talk about it. Okay? Okay, uh, yeah, good afternoon. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> First, we are going to perform with a scene which is happening in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, from, from that scene, we will start our presentation, small presentation. Okay, start. Action. <laughs> start. Oh, Shakya, how are you? It seems that you are quite sad these days. What happened? Actually, I'm quite sad right now because earlier I'm having a good time with my uh, studying. Uh, right now I'm reading, but suddenly a friend of uh, mine disturbed me with uh, saying that it's 
happens to me, I'm always telling everyone else. I'm sorry to hear this. This one. <laughs> Okay, so, so to the general audience, you observed what happened in front of you, right? So, what I want you to do is, group by group or individually, you can volunteer and answer. Uh, what did you observe? Or what did you see? Or what did you hear? Anyone? Okay, mind you, there is no right or wrong answer. You can, you can just say whatever you saw. Discouraging. Who discouraged it? She discouraged it. Okay. Any other? She judged him. She judged him and discouraged him. Okay. She judged him and discouraged him. They disturbed his personal space. And any other vision, sir? Any observations? <laughs> <laughs> or any conclusion? They are observing it very well. Everybody is observing very well. What is your point? <laughs> well, basically, uh, technically speaking, this is peer pressure. I'm supposed to be a sixth year, uh, sixth standard student, so how would I speak? I saw one of the Go and disturb her. Yeah. He was reading. Now he's not reading. Oh, not like that. So this side. So we we're doing the observation. So I have to give my. What did you see? What did you see? What did I see? Oh, yes. We're in sixth grade, right? <laughs> um, I saw one girl walk up to him, put her hand on the shoulder, I didn't hear what was being said, and then she went back. Are you sure? No, my ears are really not good. So I saw three girls talking. And one girl pointed at him, but I couldn't hear what they were saying. But it didn't look nice. That's a judgment, by the way. That's not an observation. And then one girl came and put her shoulder on him, and said, "And I don't." And her tone, I her tone, I I heard, I heard a tone of voice, but I didn't hear what she was saying. I can't remember. Okay. All right. So we won't take long. I think uh, with these observations over here, what we can uh, summarize over here. So our lesson is lesson number nine. If you have the book, you can go through that one and see. Uh, our topic was observation versus evaluation. Right. So when a conflict happens in your school or uh, it happens anywhere in your workplace, it is important to keep <coughs> observation as neutral as possible. Right. Don't mix your judgment, don't mix your emotion in your observation. So most of the observations over here, these are not observations. Right. These are not the observations. Your observation should have been neutral. You have to state whatever happened in front of you. Right. Don't uh, put your judgments inside. Don't interpret. Right. So that becomes evaluation. So in this particular case, discouraged. Right. Discourage. How? Uh, you have uh, put your own judgment. You have, you have said whatever she said. Right. She said, uh, why are you so good? Why are you always reading? That's all he said. Right. But you said she discouraged him. Right. Discouraged is your interpretation. Right. This is your evaluation judge and everything except for the last one the fifth point which she said some girl came up so that's that's the observation right she stated whatever she saw right she didn't add anything so is it clear 
Right. So our point was observation versus evaluation. Right. So in, in this particular lesson, we have few few discussions to uh, do. What is an observation? I already told you what is an observation. It is a neutral. You state whatever you observe. And uh, judgment or interpretation is mixing up your own emotional... Uh, mixing your emotions with what yeah, you're seeing. Yeah, what, what you're seeing, right? So that you... Do. And now the main question. Why are observations important? And uh, how can observations help us in uh, resolving conflict? So that's the open question. Uh, I just would like to add just few things. Sir has said almost everything. Um, now in this case, it's a conflict resolution. So conflict is a problem and we are trying to find a solution for that. And we have got, in, in, in most cases, we have got two parties. So uh, the most important thing is that we have to bring them to the neutral ground so that we can have the, uh, the solution which, is, which can be agreed by both of the parties. And that is the purpose. So um, uh, having a good... Uh, uh, observation or observer is very important to find a best solution and uh, a good observation observer is like the, sort of like a camera or it should be a, like a robot where he or she should not mix her interpretation and judgment and feelings to that but in uh, most of the cases we don't observe we don't give our observations we put a lot of uh, judgments there in Hindi, we call, we call it masalas, as I said. Uh, we put a lot of spices and then we, uh, you know, uh, destroy the, um, the real taste of the food or something like that. So, sir, we do the conclusion. Uh, once again, good afternoon. So, I'm sure you guys have enjoyed our small act. And I'm sh also sure that many of you uh, Many of you had now uh, come up with uh, the things which we had like act today. So my part is now the conclusion. So from the chapter uh, uh, observation and evaluation. So from there we first try to give you what is observation and what is evaluation. So if we are trying to uh, like if we uh, if we define or if we separate those those things. Two things uh, exactly separate. Like, if we distinct those two parts, then um, they will be uh, distinguished between language of symbol observation. So there will be no like from this this point of view. If you distinguish those two things, then there will be like uh, lots of uh, benefits are there. This is uh, it will uh, stay close to the actual fact, right? So if you don't. Uh, uh, if you don't judge, if you only speaks about the observation, then the case will stay close to the actual fact. Second thing is, it will not caught up in a own emotional interpretation. Sometimes, like he just tell, she just told him, you are studying too much. But this boy, if he interpret, if he take it into so much emotion, and if he say like, she told me that your mother is something, something, or then father is something, something, then that is the emotional interpretation. So it should be observation. And the third thing is not to, yeah, not to uh, sum up the situation, not to sum up the situation. Leave the situation uh, from the very basic itself. And it finally is, so, um, yeah, so if you observe, then it is the first step to constructive, conflicting, conflict resolution yeah? and if you uh, evaluate or if you interpret or if you judge then it will it will not be the proper mean for constructive conflict resolution thank you that was fantastic so I'll give you an example if you've got a, two kids that have come in from the schoolyard and you're going to do a conflict resolution with them and she said, and I say, oh, you're so mean. You pushed me down. You're, you're, uh, you're such a terrible friend. And he's going to be upset with me. We have to start with a clear observation without judgment. This 
clear observation, no evaluation. Okay. So I won't go into detail, but you have to have an agreement. Can we agree? I didn't push you. You pushed me. No, you pushed me. I didn't push you. Okay. But can we agree that you fell down? Yes. So you fell. So we'll just start with he fell down, not that anyone pushed. So just start with he fell down, and then you can go on with your conflict resolution. That, that, can I just say that yeah. this was amazing because we're asking you to give, we, we do this lesson in one hour. We go very slow, explain. so we, we had barely 10 minutes and we got to the point. It was fantastic. It was fantastic and also, you know, all the students are contributing. Sometimes they're not, their evaluations, still it adds to the conversation or I just saw one piece of the observation and she saw the other or he added to this. So all of this uh, participation is really important and maybe one idea is to to write and try to translate, you know, what the, judge, the evaluation is into the observation, that's also very helpful. So that was a fantastic job, really. I'm really impressed. This lesson is not easy. Observation is super hard. So Actually, well done. Yeah. One of the hardest things we do. Can I just say one thing? But in real life situation, uh, the things are very complicated. For example, a boy A pushed the boy B, and even if finally he has to accept that he pushed that boy, but he would say that last year your brother has pushed my brother and that's why I push you. Yeah. And you ask the other one, he says that, and uh, last to last year you talked about my mother and said like this. And many of the people, you know, they're involved there. So it's quite... <laughs> but this is, I'm so glad you brought this up because we call this an iceberg. If you start teaching social emotional learning and effective communication when there is iceberg in, conflict, not like the, the thermometer. Not like the thermometer, but I'll tell you a second. When if you start teaching this when they're little, then when it's little tiny conflict, you're not my friend anymore, you can't come to my birthday party, you're pushed me, you're if you deal with those conflicts when they come up, not like, oh stop, just don't play together, you know, okay, separate, you do something else, change the game. If you come up with the solutions for them, I'm always going to be angry that you pushed me and you never said, we never talked about it. I don't understand why you pushed me because someone told me it's not important. Just go play with somebody else. When you say go play with somebody else, then you have these things that escalate. And every year, I'm still angry with you for pushing me when I was in kindergarten. And I'm still mad at you and I'm not going to be friends. And I'm in and grade I'm gonna, five. And I'm going to tell you guys, don't play with them because they're so mean. I've even forgotten maybe why they were mean. But we have an iceberg conflict. So by the time I get into grade five or grade six, I scratch the surface. I think it's just a little fight. What I discover is that little fight has been growing since kindergarten. Because every little thing grew and grew and grew, and I scratched the surface of it. A little tiny nothing fight. Whew, it's all this stuff. Last year, last year, when we were in kindergarten, and it's big. But if you start dealing with things when they're little, you'll, Small have, things. you'll have almost no iceberg conflicts in grade six, because you're going to catch them. And so at the beginning, when you start teaching social emotional learning, you're right, you're going to have a lot of that stuff, and you've got to go back. Oh, man, that happened in kindergarten with your brother? Ooh, you must be still really upset about that. Tell us, and, and you deal with it then. Do you remember when you pushed that kid when you were in kindergarten? The other kid's going to go, no. It's like five years ago, I forgot, I don't remember. But it's still so present for you and you're so upset about it. And then we can say, well, I think he's, he's really, really struggling with this. If you did push him in kindergarten, how would you feel now? Oh, I feel terrible and it's still bothering you? I'm, I'm sorry, buddy, I, I didn't, I don't remember. I, I really want to turn the page. Can we turn the page, you know, six years later? And then we're going to make up and I'm going to say sorry. And then it's going to be like, oh, okay. And then you'll have to do every conflict until you get back to the one that happened today. It's super complicated and it's very time consuming. But when you do it, it eliminates all kinds of problems later. Would you add anything? Yeah, totally. No, it's, uh, that's it. Okay. Like conflictual hygiene, <laughs> taking, to, yeah. taking care of your conflicts as they arise, even if, it, if we think it's a small thing, it's a big thing for, for children yeah. and students. The teeny things are big deals for them when you're little. Uh, I have something to ask. Uh, in the discussion, they have mentioned that we as an observer, we should remain neutral. 
Will Nutril really help to solve this conflict? Yes. So what you're saying is... Nutril means we should not uh, go either side. Right. So you have to, as the adult, you have to stay neutral, for sure. And as the adult, you have to help them find a common place to start the conversation. So if I'm, so um, in the conflict of we, two people come inside having a fight, but I ended up falling down and cutting my knee, and I'm really angry because he pushed me, but he says, I didn't push you. You pushed me. No, you pushed me. It goes back and forth. So we say, okay, wait. Can we agree that Tara fell and hurt her knee? Yes. Doesn't matter who pushed who, because maybe I pushed him first and he pushed me back. So I'm angry and he's angry. What's important is that I, as the adult, you're going to be like, okay, let's just let's listen carefully. I think you're both really upset right now. You're both really angry. Can we agree Tara hurt her cut her knee? Okay, let's start from there. How are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Tara took the ball and threw it over the fence, and now we can't play ball anymore. And how are you? So I need respect for the rules in the game. How are you feeling, Tara? I'm scared. I look, I have my knee is bleeding. I'm hurt. I'm mad. And I, I need safety. OK, I need safety. He needs respect for the rules. OK, so how do you how do you meet your need for safety? And how do you meet your need for respect for the rules? And we're just going to kind of go slowly until we recognize, you're right. I did throw the ball over. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Just quickly, because I wanted to hear some other teams, but um, I just wrote something. Evaluation will lead to escalation. So if you're not neutral, it's just going to you know, get more jackly, or it's going to escalate. Observation will de-escalate slowly, because we're on a neutral ground. And the real terms, of, you know what I was asking, you know, but it's like in the Cold War, very big, huge countries, uh, conflicts and things. The, the real name would be also, the conflict can become intractable. If we don't pay attention to little things, it gets bigger, 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 and then you, you have like a, a, a ball of like wool, and you don't know where the beginning and the end is, and this is, your conflict has become intractable, and undoing it at this stage like requires so much skill, it's really hard. Whereas if you've been taking care of the little things, that's going to be so easy. Like little knots, and you undo. You help undo. You, you, you also develop lots of autonomy from your students trying to understand how to do it themselves. But if you let them become untractable, that's a lot of work. Okay, we need to get extinct because. Any other volunteers? Or do I pick somebody? Okay, I'm picking somebody. I can't remember who did. I'm picking you guys. You can stay where you are, you can come to the front. You can stay where you are. Okay, we are um, imagining a class of six standard, so K6. Okay? And uh, we're imagining that we are just beginning to introduce this into the classroom. We've not done this earlier. So we're going to start this and we're going to introduce the students to this activity. I'm the one who does a small part of it. After me comes another person and then we start. I introduce. Good morning, students. Imagine this one. Good morning. Good morning. Today we are going to do something new. Uh, we're going to try something new. So, how many of you are up for it? Oh, great. I didn't even tell you what it is. So, this is something that will help us stay a little healthy. This is something, if we do, we'll find more friends. And resolve our differences and fights. Do you think it's worth? Let's try. Do you think? How many of you would agree that we should go for something that makes us more friends, makes us fight more friends? So how many of you really, really want to have more friends? So, okay. Wow. So I have students around. Okay. There in the corner. If you could be a little more happy, you'd be, you'd be okay. So if we could do simple things that would make us a little more happy, day by day by day, how many of you are up for this? I really, really want to be more happy. How many of us? Okay, great. So we're going to do very, very simple things in the middle of our classes. Your teachers will keep trying, including myself. We'll do simple things. Let's see. Good 
afternoon class. So, um, first of all, I want to say that uh, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm standing here first time, so I'm new today. So that's why if I done some mistakes, and also I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> so please. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> okay, uh, now uh, I want to uh, tell you about the temperature. Temperature means uh, the emotions, of the, uh, the feelings or emotions of the students. So right now, uh, here I am, uh, if I ask about my feelings, then my feelings is, I heard this one, so uh, nervous and very um, confused, doubt, lots of mixing emotions. So I want to ask you, uh, what kind of feelings, what, what kind of emotions you student have? If anyone wants to share their feelings. Happy. 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 I'm curious. Curious. Wow. Now, uh, as we all heard about different kinds of feelings and emotions here, so uh, now I'm going to uh, do some interesting part that uh, to get down their feelings on some cooler place, like uh, in a stable place. Uh, to uh, <coughs> uh, as I told you that my feelings is uh, in status like a volcano status. And uh, some of in a sad part, like frozen, some are in a, a cooler zone. So it's very necessary and important to have the student to uh, be in a cooler place to uh, to do something, to get or to learn, to understand something. So it's very understand. It's very important to be settled on the cooler place. So um, I want to tell you that how we have to uh, settle on that cooler place by different kind of. Uh, methods like according to the different cultures, they have different kind of uh, strategies, methodology. For example, in our Tibetan uh, uh, culture, we used to uh, settle down in a one um, cooler place and to make uh, mindfulness by the meditation, right? So we majority Tibetan culture, we used to do like a meditation. Uh, there are different kind of meditation, right? So. I want to ask you, sir, what kind of meditation you used to do while you uh, want to uh, come in a uh, relaxation part? Uh, I have no much, uh, you know, experience of meditation, but breathing and calm down, you know, my mind, so that whatever, whatever I'm going to do, I can focus on that part. This is just a simple, you know, meditation, sort of a meditation. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, now, uh, student, uh, we uh, we get some kind of um, uh, um, examples like uh, if you want to come in our uh, cooler status, then what kind of method, what kind of strategies we want to apply? So, um, so I want to tell in the last part, in the sum up, uh, I want to tell that if you are in the both side, like frozen uh, or in a, a volcano area, you have to. Uh, you have to have some kind of meditation. You have to have some kind of um, methodology to get in a uh, relaxation part. It's very important to uh, have this kind of methodology because uh, we are learner. We are the uh, student. We are going to learn something. We will going to learn something. So to have to learn something, to understand something, it's very important to have your mind and. You all physically, mentally, emotionally have to be in one normal part. So it's very important to have your status, all the things should be in one uh, normal part. So it's very important. Thank you. Hello, student. Um, so I'm talking about the needs and feeling. And I want to say that. Uh, uh, from the needs and feeling, uh, I think that feeling is something that we can easily know, but not that easier than the <laughs> Then the needs, the uh, need is difficult to find out. So when we do the meditation, we first try to find out what you are feeling. Then after that, then we go for the needs. 
Right. So, <laughs> as a class six or seven student, um, some student will say that I need food, and I I feel starving, and I I need hungry. Right. This is the um, common response from this kind of, this standard. So um, there is a uh, but. Uh, there are some students who feel uh, who face difficulty in knowing their um, feeling and needs. That time, they, um, that time, as a teacher or instructor, it is our duty to exercise or regulate these children. To the, that time, we use the uh, this uh, this method, the emotion thermometer. Uh, so, as my friends say, that uh, this is the high level energy. And this is the low level energy. A low level energy doesn't mean that it's the bad part or only negative. It includes both positive and negative. So, for example, suppose, um, okay, I take my example. Um, when I entered this, this uh, hall, I, I feel sleepy because last night I slept very late and then woke up early morning. So I feel uh, sleepy and I need rest. And another one was, I feel worried for my friends because uh, one of my friends is sick and she needs medicine. So that um, I need help. And uh, I needed, I, I was in need of help and I went to dispenser but there was no medicine and the nurse was not there. So I feel worried and when I, Enter this hall, I was still in worried <coughs> condition. I was thinking about my friend, what is she doing, and how she is feeling right now in her room because she was all alone. So that's why I am I am worried and I'm planning to go to dispensary after this workshop is finished. So this is how I feel in this morning. And right now when I talk about the situation, then right now I'm feeling even more worried. And <laughs> So full of tension because I need to speak in front of so much hype So yeah, this is what, <laughs> what I want to talk about. Yeah, thank you. So we want my two colleagues here told you about what will be seen. <laughs> My two colleagues already spoke about something to us, so they talked about two things. Here. This is something that we can easily relate to. So, let's try doing this, shall we? If we are ready, then we should try. So, are we ready? Yes. So take five minutes for yourself and ask yourself, how does it feel? Does it feel like very warm, very energetic, a little beyond control, that much that you don't like, and very energetic. How many are like that? Because, because something went really not so good. So if you could look at this, this is like a volcano. So I have a really attentive student. Thank you. How many of you really feel like you are burning? Or and you're very energetic, but you're not able to control that. How many? <laughs> Your temperature is like red hot in the volcano. Wow. <laughs> so how does it feel like? Can we do our work while we are in the volcano? Could you play? Could you be friendly? Could you study when you are in the volcano? Can you be happy? Yeah, so let's change that, shall we? And how many of us feel a little dull, a little not so energetic, a little distracted and not so focused, and a little upset? And if that's too much, then how can we work? Are you able to look into your math book and you solve that problem? So then these two. If we are there, then we're not going to be very friendly with others. We're not going to be very friendly with ourselves. And school is not going to be fun for us. So, Madam's class is not going to be very enjoyable. 
isn't it? So this in the middle is where we want to be. How to get there? So the first thing, let's take our temperatures. So we've already taken, I want you to have it down on your copy if you can. And the only thing you need to do is to draw this. Draw this or this. Where are you in, in these three? So step one, let's take a little time and find out where are we. So close your eyes. Free up your mind of everything else. Take a deep breath. Let go slowly. Take another deep breath. And let go slowly. And now ask yourself, where are you? Is it a mountain? Is it a nice mountain? Or is it a tree? Draw that in front of you. <coughs> Anybody wants to tell us about the one Oh, there. I'm in the tree zone, called Alert. Wow. Because I'm not teaching right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing kids here, so, okay. So, one of our colleagues is really in a common zone. Would you like to tell us? Yes, uh, I'm in the middle of a uh, volcano and the, uh, the uh, no, calm down. Yeah, because I have some confidence as well as I'm too excited. Excited because I want to know, like learn and ask lots of questions. And I'm confident because I'm knowing the things which I've been asking. So I'm in the mid middle of the so you see that you could be in the volcano for things that you like and things that you don't like. And if you stay there, then it comes in the way of learning. It comes in the way of everything, including a simple moment of happiness. We will not be able to retain it. Anybody would like to share if they are in Cold zone. So it looks like I'm in the cold zone. Okay. I'm I'm really also in the cold zone. I, actually, also I feel quite excited, but inside when I look into it, I feel that it's very uh, cold because uh, I feel that I'm quite different in a different state, so uh, looking at that, taking all the situation, con uh, considering the, all the situations, I think I'm in the little bit in the colder zone right now. Great, great. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> that was fabulous. I think we're going to have to well, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Thought we we're going to get 10 minutes each uh, team, so that was great. And we're going to time because we want to see a few more. That was a wonderful demonstration. Uh, be careful, don't overdo it. Don't think you have that. Keep it simple, okay? Because I know it's really difficult at the beginning. And if it's uh, too much, also, it's very easy to read what's in the back, okay? So, and I absolutely love the fact that you spoke of your own experience, both of you, uh, the three of you, like, you know, oh, actually, I'm reading the volcano right now. This is great, because that helps. And when I do this, I also practice for myself. So if you find yourself in the volcano, you just did some fantastic modeling for your students. One slight thing, be careful if you talk about getting back to cooler, that they don't confuse the cold. I like it when you said after that, the frozen, okay? So just uh, be careful. If you say cooler, will they think that this is good or uh, there's no right and wrong? But just make sure you 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 specify. Okay, so that was really really fun. Thank you. And and keep it simple. Yeah, big round of applause. Because... I just want to add that they came up with three really good energy shifters to change your energy. So if you want to talk to them afterwards, they'll share their good ideas that they didn't share with us publicly. <laughs> um, 
Do we have another volunteer group? I'm going to time this one. Yeah. If we don't have a, if we don't have volunteer, I'm going to volunteer this group over here because they're ignoring me. <laughs> and then the next group is going to be this group, just so I'm warning you ahead of time. Okay, come really fast. We're going to time you. You can have five minutes, ten minutes. Should we do five minutes and stop? Yeah. I think we'll just do five minutes and stop so that we can do another group. So I'm going to put my timer. You, you're doing your whole lesson, and when it rings, we stop there. Okay? Are you alone? Good afternoon, everybody. So uh, we choose the topic cooperation and team folk self awareness. Actually, uh, we thought like this is very important, right? In a school, uh, classroom activities, all are related with this one. Like we are uh, doing a group uh, team work in the class, and like uh, we are also doing a group work. And <laughs> okay. So uh, about the cooperation and team work self awareness, here uh, they are divided in a two topic like uh, what and why. What is like, um, it's about like, for, uh, first of all, this is about the, uh, the main important thing is about uh, cooperation. Cooperation with another um, person to another person or like uh, from group, okay, between two group or with one to another person, anything like that. And second is like uh, self-awareness. Because of self-awareness or like for self, uh, to build the self-confidence, we are uh, doing a teamwork in a classroom or in a school or in any activities. And about the why, because it seems like uh, to develop our self-confidence. Uh, and uh, the main important thing from my point of view, I feel like uh, if we uh, take it as an example, like if uh, we are in a classroom and if teacher asks one question to all of the students, then uh, those who used to answer will only raise their hands all the time, right? And those who don't use to answer, like they always uh, be in the quiet or silent in their own place. If we divide it in a uh, group, then uh, more students will get more opportunity to share their views and share their uh, whatever they they are thinking about the topic or anything like that. So here, uh, with related uh, related example with the cooperation and a team of self-awareness, if you're going to uh, give example, which we had did uh, before some days or some months. So he will talk to you about this. Hello everyone. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to add a little bit on this. Uh, What's the uh, basic cooperation and teamwork is uh, like uh, in this we do the uh, building of a uh, good relationship among the students and it also uh, builds the communication skill in between them, which could be a uh, really great great work. And then um, it also deepens the skill of the students uh, and it also encourages them to do the work and it also needs some like uh, <coughs> uh, they should need the appreciation in the teamwork, and this could uh, lead to a uh, dynamic teamwork. And it also enhances the personal strength. And then, uh, and then uh, students come to realize that uh, what are their <coughs> actually the most of the person, and they have their own individual style to cooperate with a uh, corporate, uh, corporation or a society and which they have to understand. And, and like it says, cooperation and teamwork, we are, uh, a few days back, we have done a project, which is called a project based learning, in which we, we had some of the groups and we had to show some of the goals on, uh, on the table. And we have done it, and that would be a quite good example if we relate to this topic. Thanks so much. Well, thank you very much.
much. You, you got the, the medal for boldness because we're going to talk about cooperative learning tomorrow. Uh, so, so well done. And yes, what we're doing with cooperative learning, we're, we need the me, you and us. Uh, and it will uh, be helpful for pro project-based learning because it's the same kind of uh, philosophy. Just one clarification. Last year uh, in Ladakh, we were focusing on cooperative learning. And, and something really fun and funny happened. And I realized that when we, I was saying cooperation, that meant compliance. In, uh, so I don't know if in the Tibetan schools if uh, you're understanding it the same, but this type of cooperation is like working together, not you will cooperate with me because I said not to do this and you've not been cooperating and you broke the rule. So it's not, uh, obviously, you, you, that's exactly what you described, but just know that this cooperative learning is not the compliance and discipline part of, of things. Okay, that was great. Great. Well done. Oh yeah. Apparently it's you guys. And in less than five minutes. <laughs> Which is crazy. Again, we take a whole hour to explain these concepts. So it's really good. Are you uh, alone? Good afternoon. So, uh, we have a group of counselors, three counselors and one, uh, two teachers, and we chose, uh, we chose the topic addressing bully and the role of the bystander. Yes, so then uh, we come up with a uh, layout, a uh, lesson layout, where we are supposed uh, to teach a class about uh, the specific bystander and uh, the feeling and needs, and at the end, uh, the student will understand what I can do in this kind of situation. So, actually we didn't organize uh, that clearly, but then I'll be distributing the work, so they have idea. So, first of all, uh, uh, we assume that in this class, it's an eighth standard class, and we assume that they know the basics of bully what is bully and all those stuff. So bully is an imbalance of power where uh, relationship involves an imbalance. Uh, it's an imbalance of power where one is stronger, physically stronger, and one is like physical as you. Yeah, so we go with all this definition and all in class six, seven. So in class eight, we all know that. Like, we assume the students know all about bully. Okay, so in a class, there is a problem. Uh, or, I mean, like, uh, we are going to share a uh, case, and then a uh, student will try to, uh, try to identify what kind of feelings and what they can do, what I can do, or each individually. So, in this kind of class, first, Chambela will do the daily practice part, and then uh, feeling and needs part, Sangir uh, will do it, and then uh, I'll be explaining the case, yes, and then uh, some of you. Any one of us can do, isn't it? So Chambela will be doing the daily practice part in the class. This is class of class, uh, class eight. Um, hello, good afternoon. So uh, I don't have any idea right now. But I will try. Uh, because uh, when we talk about the emotion, we talk about the invisible thing, thing which we are not seeing and touched. So it's very complicated. So uh, here, uh, what I feel is that uh, when you can understand what emotion, you have to need very clear communication first of all. Uh, when we go through all this lesson, what I observe is. Uh, when you talk about the emotion, in terms of in English language, it's quite difficult for understand the school level kids. Because when you talk about emotion, it's directly touch of the heart. So you need the language is used for the kids to understand what the emotion is there. So uh, I feel it. Uh, when we do a daily practice, we need the mindfulness and check the emotional timeometer is important, right? So I just let it translate in Tibetan. I can think that's more easy for you because my Tibetan is not good, but I just immediately translate, right? So emotional timeometer is 
jiajie, right? That just means that the emotion temperature to check the someone's emotion. It could be either healthy or unhealthy or major. So, um, when I saw this uh, emotional temperature, it's be in the volcano and the coming down and the iceberg. I think it should not be like volcano all the time. When you be excited, I feel like, wow, I'm in the volcano. It is not necessary, right? So what I feel is, I just give in the Tibetan terms, really is represent of this stage. Uh, the first is that uh, what I represent is a uh, volcano is in hell, Nyangwa. And then we hit earth, and then higher is in heaven, that is the iceberg. So when you be in the hell, what kids understand? When you talk about the, where's your immersion? I, my immersion is Nyangwa, it means a hell. That means you have something wrong, so you have some problems, okay? right? So things that we have to understand what the problem is going inside. That's very important, what I feel. So I just make some Tibetans because uh, I can uh, I make sure that it, the kids can easy to understand where is the emotion right now. So once you can know the emotion, then how to self-regulate it, right? So uh, what did, uh, someone says they have some methods of strategies how to bring your uh, emotion from the uh, you know so uh, uh, bring your emotion in the volcano straight to the coming zone. So what I usually do is. I don't know it's a use to you guys or not, but most probably when I was be high immersion. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for giving this time. Um, oh, yeah. Convey that uh, in order to teach this kind of lesson, <laughs> teacher, uh, students need to be like well versed emotional vocabulary so that they can uh, uh, truly like express whatever they are feeling. Otherwise, uh, in such kind of class as uh, we used to take, student doesn't know like what they are feeling. They just say happy, sad, or maybe anxious. Yes. So it is very difficult for us to uh, know or like to carry on with the class. Because they are like emotionally, uh, like emotional uh, vocabulary, they are very poor. So in this, uh, I'll just summarize the thing. So if I have to take this kind of class, uh, sorry for a few minutes, yes. So sorry, yeah. So if I have to take up this kind of class, then uh, uh, first, like uh, as I've already told you, uh, I'll be assuming that they all know the basics of bully, right? So then uh, we'll be doing the daily practice. We are, it can be like mindful meditation, yes? And then after that, uh, thermometer. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so Chambela suggested us that this, we could modify that. Uh, heaven, earth, and hell. Yeah, how you are feeling. Yeah, so, so I thought it will be like too strong, right? So, uh, it will be like. <laughs> We need to be careful about translating this into a religious system, okay? Because that's religion. And there comes an element of morality because heaven and hell, good, bad. And we're, you know, when we said last week, we're coming from a Western psychological wellness point of view. So in this thermometer, there's absolutely zero judgment. All emotions are beautiful and welcome. Anger, depression, sadness, are all beautiful and welcome. So this, this you have to be careful because it's, it is a different thing. And I know the first reflex, uh, because of the, the Tibetan uh, Buddhist background, would be to do that. But it's something different. So you have to think yourself so on how we make this a secular approach. It is not a religious approach right now. It's a well-being. So if we start judging by good and bad, Imagine a small kid in uh, six years old that says, I'm in hell. That would be really hard. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, someone is always in heaven. <laughs> it's like unreal. Uh, but, you know, and so the Buddhist psychology point of view comes in a different place in this system. So, sorry. So, like, uh, I'll be doing this uh, and after that, uh, we'll work on feeling and needs. And maybe some sharing, feeling and needs. And then uh, I'll be like uh, uh, sharing them on history. Uh, 
I'll tell you the form of story, or maybe uh, I'll, I'll ask some of the students to role play a story. So this story is basically a real one, like case, like it's happened in class eight. We are a very like, big, fat student. Uh, I mean, like we don't know that that student is bullying that uh, uh, another student, but uh, like when we know it is too late, so like. That boy uh, used to um, play mail, uh, that particular uh, boy A used to play mail, uh, boy B, and he always uh, like tell boy B to do his homework, to complete his notes, and all those stuff, and if he doesn't do, lunch, snatch away the breaks and all. So, like it happens for a month. So that boy goes, uh, now it's uh, like lost control, and then uh, the boy called his uh, father, their, their parents, and parent called headmaster. And boy don't want to leave the school now. So that time, uh, at that last stage, we know the thing that's happening with the boy. And then after talking with the teacher, the teacher said that yes, oh yes, that that boy A, that boy B is just uh, like it's somehow lost the class, lost his weight and distract it, and sometime uh, disturb the class also. So in that case, uh, the actor is uh, the big student, uh, the fat student, and the receiver is boy B, and then uh, bystander is all the classmates. The, all the classmates know that what's happening, and then nobody dares to drop into the class, uh, the class teacher or counselor or headmaster. So I'll be like, uh, uh, sharing the case with them, or maybe like a group of students will role play it, and then we'll be distributing the mask. Oh, so mask is uh, student will be working on a mask where they will be they, where they will try to write out what as a receiver what will be the feeling, what will be the need, as an actor what will be the feeling and what will be the need, and as a bystander what will be the feeling and then needs. Then maybe some discussion. Then after that, uh, we let them do what can I do and what can I say. That part is most important, right? Then we'll be collecting that, that work and then uh, we'll do some homework as a counselor. I'll do some homework, right? And homework and positive things we'll keep it aside and some negative things we'll keep it aside. And then according to the situation, uh, we'll either do a group session or we'll do an individual session. <coughs> Right. So that is what uh, we have come up with. Actually, we thought of distributing the work, but then time to distribution, distribution of work. Okay. Yes, there is no time to it. Thank you so much for this. And uh, you know what, the mask, we, when we do it in our schools, uh, we actually also decorate the corridors with it. Or you could do some, uh, you know, you could put it somewhere in a school, you can put it in your classes to bring also more awareness. Um, and you know what, I, I don't know, counselors, do you teach in classes sometimes? Okay, so this is the type of lesson that's super appropriate for you. Like, uh, Actually, the counselors, and even to some extent, I find the monks and nuns could teach some of these things. But uh, sorry about the thermometer, but we really be careful about translating it to a religious context because then, then we're in something else. And the last thing we want is, is uh, some kind of judgment uh, on the emotions. With that lesson, what's really fun, what's well, so, what's really good about that lesson too is you can get the once your your grade eight students have done that, and you hang it all over the wall. You can also get the grade eight students to go with the younger kids, and they don't you don't have to do the lesson, but they can take the the mask where they're suggesting what do you do. So then the older kids can go into the younger kids and say, if you see something happening that's making you worry. Here are the strategies that you can use, and it's really effective when the older kids teach the younger kids, then they're more likely to go and get help, often from teachers or from the older kids, which is really a nice progression. I think it's almost time. So, yeah, no more teams. Okay, now we have to measure the thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the volcano? Yeah, maybe all of us. Oh, yeah, okay, well, let's take the temperature. Raise your hand if you're in the volcano. 
I heard, just want to see, I heard, calm alert, you escaped, you don't have to present. <laughs> I really want to thank you all because it's really hard what you've done. What? Me what? Wait, Dara's saying something. All right, we need to collect the books from you, but we're, we're going to make sure that every school has one before they before they go. We just have to, there's something that we didn't write into the book that we need to include. So I was uh, thanking everybody for, for having a lot of courage for doing something not easy at all. Um, this thermometer thing is going to bug me. I want you to make it a Tibetan thing. What I was saying is I don't completely do dance. I don't say that I completely do dance. That I don't know what I'm thinking about. But I said the initial stage of thinking of mind. What is the happy? What is unhappy? That's what you But even even uh, even this, there's no right and wrong answer. So trying to fix it is not working because it doesn't represent what can happen in our human experience. But if we can make it more Tibetan somehow without the religious context please look for something that that really would reflect something like very tibetan and you could even change the images okay but nothing that fixes or judges because then we're we're restraining the human, the human experience but let's let's try to do something really tibetan that would be really fun yeah You're, that's your uh, challenge <laughs> okay so i think that's it thank you very much I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I'm sorry for you know to use this five minutes, just five minutes. Okay. Um, I wonder, you know, uh, we are going to in real situation. We are going to start with the thermometer, the emotion thermometer, and then we are going to share or show the feelings and needs, and then we do some energy shifting. And uh, then we are supposed to be in the comfortable zone, uh, closer to it. Most of the students are supposed to be in the closer zone. <coughs> then we uh, start teaching. For example, in my case, I have to teach the science. And in, uh, in real life situation, if you teach for, let's say, a few minutes, then again, then again uh, you are not going to be in that, uh, that comfortable zone. Some of them will go to the ice park zone, and some will go to the, you know, you know, volcano zone. And uh, so, uh, my the main question is, you being a psychologist, I mean, how long we can teach uh, for particular classes? And then in in our cases, you know, in most of the cases, especially in class nine and ten, the, the syllabus is so lengthy that we have to finish all of them. We are burdened with the syllabus, and uh, can you give us? I mean, this is a common you know, problem for all the teachers. Right? Can you say just a few words? And I just want to, at, you know, at the same time, I want to see the beauty of this thermometer. And we also know the thermometer that we can measure our temperatures. Like we should be somewhere, our body temperature should be somewhere at 37 degrees Celsius. But if you are too low, then you have got. Uh, hypothermia, <laughs> and if you're in uh, volcanic zone, it would be you have got the fever, and uh, to be able to do all these things, we have to be somewhere around 37 degrees Celsius. But one special thing about this is that in this case, you can be at fever as well as hypothermia at the same time. It's a, it's a very special one. Thank you. So I'll try to answer your question, some of your questions quickly. You're right, the curriculum is very intense, and so you can't spend too long doing this. But you also don't need to, um, you don't need to teach it every time. So you guys know what this is. You don't need to explain it every time. You don't even need to use the picture, especially when they're older. You show them once and they get it. So all you need to say is, let's take three deep breaths, connect with yourself, where are you? It takes five seconds. You don't necessarily do the feelings and needs cards every time. In fact, don't do it every time because the older kids will freak out. Um, they'll be bored. They'll be bored. So all you need to do is connect. Or you, or you can even 
if you've done it often and you say, let's just take one minute to get grounded, and you set your timer for one minute, and you say you have one minute to be bored, you have, or to dream about your favorite holiday or your favorite place, one minute, okay, and go. So the practice is really becoming grounded and self-aware. Okay, I'm in the volcano. I, I appreciate, like, maybe I know what's bugging me. I'm, it's over here. I'm going to take my one minute, get grounded, and be in the class of science right now and focus. So it's not to stay calm all the time. It's just to be able to be connected. Okay, let's go. I, this is where I need to be right now in science. It's a bit like meditation also. The practice of meditation is to uh, observe your mind and, and, you know, bring it back. Same with emotions, you know, you're going to do this for one second, you're hot, calm on earth, and whoop, something else will happen. So the idea is the awareness, not the result. Uh, but the result helps, it's fun. But the awareness is the important bit. And um, as Tara was saying, you know, because you teach by subject here, you will not, when you start a class, if every, every teacher does that every time, the, the children and the students will get bored. This is a school implementation, now you're at the school level. Who's going to do it in the school? Are we making sure the kids get it at least once a day? Are we getting it during the week, at least the daily practice? Are we, uh, you know, uh, making sure that emotional literacy is happening in our school? So this is like more like a school discussion you need to have. And, and how you do it in your class in science, you're more like finding opportunities to reinvest rather than going through these explicit lessons. Maybe in science there's a few lessons that will apply or in math, but you're actually more uh, looking for opportunities to reinvest some of the concepts. So you should be familiar with the lessons. That doesn't mean you're going to teach that to the, the, the students. So I know in some schools they've opted to do a one minute one minute mindfulness, they, and they'll do it uh, for one minute after lunch every day over the PA system, and the whole the intercom, and the whole school just goes silent for one minute. That's how everybody gets it. And then if you wanted to reinvest, you reinvest it in science only like right before you have a test. Oh, let's let's kind of get calm before we get going. So. You might choose to have one way to do it with your whole school, or you might need to coordinate how, like, like Sophie's saying, so that not everybody is doing it. Uh, there's other teachers that have decided that the kids are the most dysregulated in the morning when they arrive and after lunch. So in my class, when you come in, you can read a book or draw, or the teacher will turn on music. Just for one minute, regroup, and go. So it can take many different flavors. But it shouldn't take more than one minute. Yeah. <laughs> so have a beautiful evening and we'll see you tomorrow.